Hi there, I figured that I would review some of the alignment points with you and then go over just some really quick and dirty standing exercises or warm-ups that you can do on your own. Okay, so starting with stands so that you want your feet to be hip bone distance apart. So if you were to palpate your hip bones, the ones that actually protrude, and drop the line straight down. So sometimes I'll just take my pointers and point them straight down. When I do that, if that imaginary line went straight down, you would want the center of your ankle complex. So right where there's like a little dimple inside your ankle, that line would be lined up with those hip bones. So you start with that. Then you also wanna make sure that the pinky sides of your feet point relatively straight ahead. If you find that you're pretty turned out, you want to incrementally make it more and more parallel. You don't want to make it too extreme, but for now, aim to do that when you're doing any sort of your exercises at the gym. Then step three is you want to lean your weight back a little bit into your heels and be able to pick up your toes and wiggle your toes around a little bit so that from a side standpoint, if I were to drop a line from the center of my hips straight down, I would have a plumb line. So doing that, sometimes it makes you feel like you're gonna fall backward. I understand that and that's okay. So don't go to the extreme. If you're a little bit here to start and then you have to slowly work your way back until your brain can understand that that's not falling, that's a good place to start. Another way to practice it is if you were just to lean on a wall with your feet a little bit out in front of you and just sit here for a minute and just let your brain understand what it feels like to put the weight back onto your heels and not have your toes so loaded forward. All of this you probably need to do barefoot or in a really minimal shoe. If you're wearing one of your boots, um, unfortunately it's gonna have a heel rise, which is gonna naturally tip you forward. Even a typical running shoe will tip you forward a little bit. So if you're able to kick off your shoes, great. Otherwise, just do the best that you can with what you've got. And then if you were to come away from the wall and just stand for a second, your brain would understand that it would want you to come back a little bit and not feel so forward driven. So you've got your stance, you've got the weight a little bit back on the heels. Now we've got your kneecaps and your thighs. So ideally, your thighs and your kneecaps would be in a relaxed state. So also using the wall, you can come back and putting some weight onto the wall. See if you can't naturally release your quads and kneecaps and if you're unable to do that something that I like to do is I'll squeeze them like I'll manufacture a tightening through my thighs which lifts my knees and then I release them and you'll notice I like to do it with my hands too because sometimes that will help educate my thighs on what to do and release and just go back and forth a few times sometimes one leg will be easier than the other and just hang out there for a second and get those thighs to learn how to release and then same thing after you get used to that sensation See if you can drift yourself away from the wall and maintain that same kneecap release. It takes a lot of practice. If it's a little bit tricky, I would say that's probably the last element that needs to be added. But otherwise, that's what you're shooting for. Same thing, when you put the weight back on your heels, it should hopefully help to unengage those quads and knees. You'll notice when you drift forward, they'll want to grip and hold on. So then, we have our stance. Hip bone distance apart, weight back on the heels, pinkies pointing roughly straight ahead. Shoulders are relaxed, and you wanna feel like your sternum is slightly relaxed down. You wanna watch that you're not holding it at tension, and I'm wearing a really big turtleneck, which is not helpful, but you'll notice you could stand at attention, and you kinda of feel like your ribs are rotated up like a rolling pin. My pecs are pointing upward towards where the ceiling meets the wall, or if I relax my sternum down, my pecs point more straight ahead, if not in line with the horizon. So add attention. You can see a pretty big bend in my upper back. Sternum neutral. It's truly like an exhale. Sometimes I give the image of like a puppy or a baby resting on your chest and you just kind of melt into that positioning. Unfortunately, when you bring your ribs in that position, the head and the shoulders end up adjusting. So something you're gonna to wanna to do, again, using your wall, <sighs> giving your weight into the wall, feel like that mid rib cage right below the shoulder blades is touching the wall. The head doesn't need to touch the wall. And you can just do a couple little shoulder rolls up, back, and down, up, back, 
and down and see if you can keep your back in that same position, not rolling off the wall, but just a little up, back and down. And then just settle. Then you can slightly drift your chin as if you're making a double chin back, but if it is if there is a conveyor belt pulling your head up to the ceiling, you're gonna think of taking your head back and slightly up and just hang out here for a moment. So we call that a head ramp. So just creating a little bit of room in the back of your neck, but then check your ribs. Did you want to arch your back away from the wall or were you able to keep a little bit of that softness in your upper back and maintain that head ramp? The head doesn't need to touch the wall, mine doesn't touch the wall, but you're thinking almost like a Nike swoosh going back and up the wall. My eyes end up drifting down a little bit below the horizon, so I have to use my eyes, the muscles around my eyes to lift my gaze back to neutral. You'll feel actually kind of releases the jaw, the back of the throat. You can even hear it in my voice. Sometimes when my head is here, it sounds a little bit tighter. If I do a head ramp, you can hear it opens up my vocal cords and it's a little bit more of a deeper sound. And I think that that's probably where I should be speaking from. And then same thing if you were to drift yourself away from the wall and just settle for a moment, you can sense that in your body. So last piece, which is kind of fun, very simple is your arms. So we want your arms to swing and we want them to swing comfortably and naturally. So you can gently press both arms straight back behind you, trying not to pinch the blades, keeping them just in a neutral position. You can see, I can see my fingertips behind me and then relax and swing them forward. So actively press them back, release. Press, release, and press, release. And then try one arm at a time, and when you press it back, notice if that inner elbow, elbow pit, is pointing straight ahead to the wall in front of you, or is it slightly rotated into your body? And you want like the bicep and the inner elbow to point straight ahead. It helps if there's a mirror in front of you, and release. And then same thing, press and release. And you want to get accustomed to actively pressing the arm behind you and then letting it release down, press and release and keep checking in with that elbow pit. You might get a little front of the shoulder release and a little press and release, a little press and release. And now as you keep repeating this from side to side, are you keeping the weight back on your heels or do you find that you're naturally drifting forward? Press, release, press, release. And then if you get kind of comfortable with that, it's helpful to kind of speed it up a little bit. Just going back and forth, trying to keep your ribs pretty steady, keeping those arms swinging straight front and back. Watch if they slightly cross the body, slightly bend as they swing through. You want to keep a pretty long arm. If you put a really light dumbbell in your hand or even like um, a water bottle, something light, you can kind of feel the weight drop, 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 and you want that sensation. And then rest, and then just settle for a moment just see where you fall. And that's it for your alignment points. Good job. Take care.